quadrilateral space syndrome. Enjoy the video. Kamal Gokas, Associate Professor, Baskent University Alanya Research and Practice Center, the 8th of April 2023. Quadrilateral space syndrome is an uncommon condition that has been reported to affect athletes and overhead workers who perform overhead movement patterns, such as baseball players, tennis players, and volleyball players. Cahill and Palmer described it as a rare condition that involves compression of the posterior humeral circumflex artery and the axillary nerve within the quadrilateral space, which produces pain over the posterior aspect of the shoulder that may radiate into the arm and forearm with a non-dermatomal distribution. Symptoms typically occur with the arm in an overhead position. For example, the late cocking or early acceleration phase of the throwing motion. The quadrilateral space is formed by the teres major inferiorly, the long head of the triceps medially, the teres minor posteriorly, the subscapularis anteriorly, and the surgical neck of the humerus laterally, figure 1. This space is located in close proximity to the posterior band of the inferior joint capsule of the glenohumeral joint. It is not uncommon for athletes who perform overhead movement patterns to be positioned in abduction and extreme external rotation. History. Quadrilateral space syndrome has been reported to have a spontaneous onset during sport participation or as a result of acute trauma. Misdiagnosis may be responsible for an underestimate of the prevalence of quadrilateral space syndrome. Cahill described four cardinal features of QSS. A. Poorly localized shoulder pain. B. Non-dermatomal distribution of paresthesia. C. Discrete point tenderness in the quadrilateral space. And D. A positive arteriogram finding with the affected shoulder in a position of abduction and external rotation. A high index of suspicion should be maintained for this unusual diagnosis in the overhead athlete who presents with recalcitrant posterior shoulder pain. Examination. The athlete or overhead worker who has quadrilateral space syndrome will typically complain of vague pain in the shoulder and around the shoulder that can radiate as far distally as the forearm in a non-dermatomal pattern. This may be experienced before, during, and after physical exertion. There is often isolated tenderness in response to palpation over the quadrilateral space, which is very close to the posterior rotator cuff muscles, teres minor, and infraspinatus, figure. McAdams and Dillingham recently reported the opinion that the most important findings in patients with quadrilateral space syndrome are pain in the quadrilateral space and a positive lidocaine block test. Active range of motion for external rotation of the shoulder is typically full, but is painful at the end range. Manual pressure applied to end range internal rotation may elicit symptoms. Text here neurologic examination is normal in most cases, but atrophy of the deltoid, arrow, may be present. In chronic cases, the lesion must be distal to the quadrilateral space when the posterior deltoid and teres minor are not affected. We have commonly seen a thickened band along the border between the teres minor and infraspinatus muscle tendons in baseball pitches. Typically, this thickening is attributed to hypertrophic connective tissue of the involved musculature. A number of authors have identified such a hypertrophic band of connective tissue as a potential cause of compression in the quadrilateral space. Figure B. Cadaveric dissection of the QS from the posterior view. C. Magnified cadaveric dissection of the QS and its contents, including the posterior humeral circumflex branches, blue arrowheads, axillary nerve, black arrowhead, and fibrous bands, white arrowhead. Lateral is on the right of the image. Athletic trainers should consider quadrilateral space syndrome in the differential diagnosis of posterior shoulder pain. Definitive diagnosis may require an angiogram to identify an occlusion of the circumflex scapular artery, which accompanies the axillary nerve through the quadrilateral space. Conservative management. At least six months of conservative management is recommended before surgical intervention is performed. During this six-month period, treatment should include NSAIDs, therapeutic exercise, manual therapy, and restriction of activities that produce symptoms. 
glenohumeral joint mobilization, rotator cuff and scapular strengthening, cross-friction massage, and posterior capsule stretching have been found to provide beneficial effects. Surgical treatment, nerve decompression, indications, failure of non-operative management, significant weakness and functional disability, decompression of space occupying lesion, techniques, open release of quadrilateral space and or arthroscopic repair of labral tear. Techniques. Open quadrilateral space decompression. Approach. Lateral decubitus position. 3 to 4 cm incision over the quadrilateral space. Identify posterior border of deltoid and reflect superlateral. Expose fat in quadrilateral space between teres minor and teres major. Technique identify the axillary nerve by using the humeral neck as reference. Avoid cutting the posterior circumflex artery. Free any fibrous lesions adhering to the nerve. Ensure the nerve is completely free of compression by moving the arm into abduction and external rotation. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel.